because of the media portrayal of, of cops and what cops do and, and how cops are awesome and they solve these things and they're big fucking heroes. Fucking lethal weapon. That's what that's what is the mentality of cops. And when you have to on a daily basis, you know, fucking do traffic duty or make sure when there's a, a utility thing fixing the phone line outside my house that cops need to show up to maintain traffic and maintain civilians, not fucking gawking at these people trying to do their jobs. That's not exciting, but that's part of what you're doing as a cop. Right. And we'll address this, the, this problem a little later in the video as well. Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to another Road Reflections. Uh, as I said, I've, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna release a couple of these uh, over the course of the next week or two, and then I'm gonna kind of switch over to some bigger writing projects that I have. So uh, these kind of ranty videos will be a little sparse, but I do have some live streams coming up as well in February that I would like to do. Uh, and as usual, those live streams are usually going to be Friday afternoons. They're going to run, you know, an hour to two hours, something along those lines. And they're going to kind of be this big uh, deep dive into some current event stories, uh, kind of similar to what these are. Right. Um, and I will say right off the bat that I I, uh, I want to address this is uh, if you see me kind of be a little spacey and a little slower uh, with this video uh, and my notes and stuff. It is because I am um, kind of nursing a little bit of a migraine today. I woke up with a migraine. Uh, you know, I've taken medicine and, 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 some, and some weed and some coffee and water and all that. But it still kind of leaves me a little foggy, even if I do uh, get ahead of it. That's, that's an unfortunate uh, circumstance of the migraines and all that sort of stuff. So if, if, if you kind of see me being a little slower and taking a moment to process things. Uh, that's why. But uh, I want to, you know, if you if you do enjoy this content, if you do like the, the topics we're discussing, please do make sure you subscribe to this channel and please make sure you hit the like button and share this out with your friends, your, your enemies, or really just whoever you feel like would get value out of this video or, or, or you know, would... would uh, find some sort of critical thought and discussion from this video. Um, and uh, the other thing I want to mention to you guys, especially those that are watching this on YouTube or Facebook specifically, if this, if, if those are the places where you guys get uh, my videos from, I will say that there are going to be some videos that are not going to be available on Facebook or YouTube because they're going to be reviews um, of kind of pop culture stuff. And, like big media stuff and you know i'm not claiming that that is my property i'm kind of using it as a reference point uh, i'm using it as a you know a bibliography of of sense um but because of that there's copyright rules involved and i can't post those on youtube because they will delete my channel so uh those are going to be specifically posted on my rockfin page on my odyssey page on my website obviously and uh, also the audio version. So if you haven't subscribed to those and you want to get the full breadth of all of the work that I'm going to be producing and all the videos that are going to be coming out this year, um, go over to rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha or odyssey at krishmohanhaha or to my website, Uh Pretty consistent uh, all the way through there. And, uh, and, and, you know, make sure that you're subscribed to those. Uh, or the best, the other way that you can get it is by signing up for my free email list. Uh, if you subscribe to my free email list at krishmohanhaha.substack.com, uh, I send it out once a week on Sundays. And it's kind of a list of all of the videos and podcasts that I've released throughout the week. Uh, and not only that, but it sometimes I also write essays, short stories, you know, true stories, that sort of stuff. And, um, 
and and that's where I publish them first. Uh, so the email list is a great way to do that. And and Substack also has a way that you can you can become a sustaining member. You can make monthly contributions directly via the email list. And uh, you know the, another way that you can become a sustaining member is directly over on my website at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. Uh, to those that have already become sustaining members, thank you. You guys, every every little bit of contribution helps and it goes a long way. And I'm really, really appreciative of that. So uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I appreciate you guys very much. Um, but monthly contributions, if you make those, you get exclusive unreleased stand-up comedy material. Uh, you get bonus videos. Um, I am going to be, I'm, I'm probably going to try to do like a once a month or once every six to eight weeks, something like that. I haven't figured out the frequency yet. Uh, but I, want, I would like to do a stand-up show just for the members. I think that would be fun and uh, and it would just be a, a fun, cool way to kind of workshop new material that I'm working on, new jokes that I'm trying to do. You know, I don't have the opportunity to go to an open mic um, and, uh, a, a, and and try out new material as regularly as I used to because of COVID, because of various different elements. Um, so... I thought that would be a fun way to kind of do that. So if you are a sustaining member or thinking about becoming a sustaining member, uh, let me know. What do you think of that idea? If if that's something that you would be interested in. Uh, and speaking of virtual stand-up shows and uh, live stand-up comedy shows, February 3rd, I'm doing a virtual stand-up show. It's going to be some new material, workshop and some old material, tweaking it up a little bit, um, you know, uh, and, and, the the idea is that if I do this, if I continue to do these virtual stand-up shows, it will be pretty much, there will be some level of new material every single time that I do the show. Uh, I do have some live performances. Uh, in April, I'm going to be on tour with Ron Placone. You can go to his website, ronplacone.com, to grab tickets. Uh, I'm going to be doing like a week and a half on tour with him. And I'm very excited. It's been a really long time since I've seen Ron uh and and got to hang out with him um so i'm very excited about that but on february 17th if you're in the pittsburgh area i have a show uh it is a live comedy show at the bryant street barbershop and uh i'm really excited because two really good friends of mine are going to be in town performing on that show as well uh we got uh garrett teitelbaum uh and Osha Dwyer as well coming in and I am super excited. I haven't seen them in a really long time. I believe Osha's headlining that show too. So these are two of my favorite comics and, uh, and I'm going to be there. So if you're in Pittsburgh, come hang out. It's 10 bucks. You Venmo Shannon Norman, who is the producer of the show and also a fantastic barber who is, uh, is the person that uh, gave me this, this do. Uh, so um, yeah, come, come hang out for that. Uh, okay, those are all the announcements, uh, and we got those out of the way. Sorry, it took a little bit longer than uh, than normal, but I want to get into this topic. This is a topic that I've wanted to talk to uh, talk about for a little bit because uh, there's only one article that I have seen so far, even even f from uh, lefty news sources. I only saw one article addressing this particular issue that needs to be addressed. And I think it's an issue that I think when we talk about police brutality, when we talk about the problems within uh, the criminal justice system, it's it is an element that is missed. And that is the element of uh, how Latin American people are treated uh, by the police. Right. Um, that that is that is part of the problem. It is equivalently as much of a problem as the violence towards uh, black people from cops, violence towards indigenous people by the cops, right? Violence towards um, Arab and uh, Indian folks by the cops. Just anybody that's not a white dude is at a higher susceptibility to being harassed by the police and being fucked with by the cops uh, than white dudes, even though it is true that white dudes do get shot by cops as well. When you look at it on a statistical level, there are less black people, less Latin people, less Indian people, less Arab people, less black women, and, and so on and so on. The, the, there is less of them than white dudes in America, less, less minorities than white people in America. That's why 
uh, they're called minorities because they are in the minority when it comes to uh, skin color and ethnicity. So, you know, it's a dominantly fucking white country. It's dominantly Anglo country. Although things are starting to change, right? We are we are beigeifying the fucking world. It's 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 a Russell Peters joke come to life uh, is basically what that is. If you're familiar with Russell Peters, he did a joke about that. He did a joke about how everybody in the world is just going to start becoming beige. Uh, and that is what's happening. We are we are seeing a lot more, uh, you know, before it was like, oh, if you're a white person, you can't date a black lady or whatever the fuck, right? Like, and now I think that those things are 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 gone because this new generation of you know even millennials and this and this new generation of kids that are coming up uh, don't really give a shit about the color of your skin or any sort of surface level things. And and again, this sort of movement has a groundswell at the bottom, and once the groundswell hits you know, the system can't ignore it anymore and henceforth has to make a change, right? The system has to change with the demands of the people. This is why I say labor organizing and organiza organizing in general and grassroots efforts and community-based initiatives and local politics are so important. And look, I'm just as guilty as, you know, the next person in terms of paying attention to local politics, because I'm terrible at paying attention to local politics and I need to be better about it, right? But it's a constant reminder of me to be like, okay, that this is why you pay attention to local politics. So um, I want to I wanna get into this, this topic here because there are cops in Louisiana, and this is the quote that um, – that the article has in it. And, I, and, and this is not a quote from a police officer or something, but it is, it is a quote from uh, a researcher that well, was looking into this. And they basically says, if everyone is white, there is no racial bias. Right. And that's the philosophy behind what these cops are doing and what these cops are doing, especially in States like Louisiana and Texas, Arizona, um, the, the pro Publica article that uh, I uh, sourced from, specifically talks about Jefferson, the Jefferson Parish in Louisiana because it's one of the more um, – they just do this more often in that, in that area here. So in Louisiana, they're marking Hispanic and Latino drivers as white to erase racial bias, right, and to ensure that – basically they're hiding any sort of um, forceful arrests or abuses – that cops perpetrate on immigrants, on Latin Americans specifically, in this in this case, right, won't be noted. It won't be it won't be written down. And lawmakers have tried to, especially in in Louisiana, have tried to get rid of this data collection policy because it is a policy, right? Part of uh, studying how um, policing and racial biases and racial profiling. Uh, exist and affect the community, you have to study this sort of stuff. So it's like, okay, then then they have to mark down the ethnicity and the race of the individual that they pull over, right? And and most of these things that they're talking about are traffic tickets. They are they're getting pulled over for you know b basic traffic violations. That's what these folks are getting pulled over for. Uh, and in a lot of these instances, as we've seen with black people, they get violent. You know, uh, we, we saw it in the case of um, the gentleman in uh, Minnesota, Philando Castile. Sorry, it took me a second to get his name there. Uh, but Philando Castile was a registered gun owner. The police officer asked for his information. He says, I'm going to reach over. I'm going to open my glove compartment, but I do have a weapon in there. And I'm not reaching for the weapon. I'm just reaching for my paperwork. And, of course, he reaches over, he opens it, and the cop shoots him. Right? So this is, this is basically saying we're going to ignore that. We're going to erase that as a racial bias story. You know, we're, we're going to make it about the cop felt threatened for his life. Well, in the Philando Castile situation, why? He told you that he was a registered gun owner. He told you where it was, and he told you that he's reaching for his paperwork, which just so happens to be in the same place as his weapon, which he has, you know, told you about. That's racial bias. You heard black guy weapon and you freaked out. That's racial bias. That's taught. 
that can be undone. It takes time. But that should, that person should not be a police officer if that's the case. Right? So lawmakers have tried to control this law, and, and they've tried to prevent this sort of data collection because they don't want officers to collect data on traffic stops. They don't want to – because then it looks like, uh-oh, you know, we've pulled over – uh, 5% more black people than white people. We've pulled over 18% more Latino people than black people. We've pulled over 10% more indigenous people than white people, right? And, and, and then it goes, okay, so this is statistically showing evidence of racial profiling. Why are you guys pulling over these people so much? Why, why is the black community being pulled over? Why is the, why is the Hispanic community being looked at like this? Right. That's what the statistics are supposed to be. Now, it's not it's not a solve, but it is proving the point that we have been talking about for fucking ever. Forever. We've been talking about this. And there are states. So there are lawmakers that want to get rid of that. In Louisiana, there's a loophole. Loophole is as long as there's an anti-racial profiling policy in place within the Police department, they don't have to worry about it. They don't have to worry about the data collection. Um, so so there's two kind of levels to how in Louisiana specifically, these cops are subverting getting away with racial profiling and and abusing people of a different ethnicity, right? Um, one is marking them as white and then the other one is having this vague kind of racial profiling policy anti-racial profiling policy well if the policy is a loophole to prevent racial profiling but is still contributing to racial profiling do you kind of feel like the policy isn't really the fucking solution to this problem like that's not the solution this is the, the and, and by the way the you know Neither of these things are really stopping racial profiling, right? Like data collection isn't really stopping racial profiling. Um, and neither is racial profiling policy that's not getting enforced because it's because it's a loophole to preventing data collection, which is in place to prevent racial profiling. So it's this kind of it's it's the snake eating itself is really what this is in terms of cops pretending like they don't racially profile people right the, the and and look data collection isn't the core of the problem and having a policy isn't the core of the problem it's the culture and the training that cops receive training and culture that uh, perpetuate racial profiling that encourage racial profiling that tell them that it's okay to do that Right? And we're going to kind of go into a little bit deeper onto that later in the video, but that's the problem. The, the training and the culture encourages racial profiling. We've seen that time and time again with the way, you know, cops are trained to think that everybody is the enemy. And when you put somebody in that kind of a headspace, they are a lot more likely to use a weapon of some kind and use authoritative force of some kind because they're acting out of abject fear. It's not a rational thought. There's no de-escalation there. It's, uh-oh, danger, shoot, 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 shoot. That's the training. And then on top of that, you add, you know, all black people are dangerous. Hispanics are all illegal immigrants. And and then you put, and then on top of that, you know, anybody that's brown with a beard could be a terrorist. Right. And then on top. So now you have the racial bias on top of a culture that kind of tells you everybody is the enemy. And then on top of that, you give them all hero complexes. And then on top of that, you know, a lot of them are veterans and you and they have PTSD. You've layered. This is a multi-layer psychosis that is not being taken care of. There is a solution to all this. Right. And it does involve a lot of mental health and cognitive behavioral therapy. But but in order to do that, in order for cognitive behavioral therapy to stick, they can't be cognitive anymore you can't be continued to be in that same system that is encouraging the behaviors that you are trying to undo here's the thing right this is why this is why having a policy anti-racial profiling policy isn't a fix to this problem 
right? It's a rule. And that's what a lot of people will say. Well, they have the policy in place, right? The policy is in place for a reason. They have the policy in place. We should be happy with that. But here's the thing. Um, first of all, the legal system has nothing to do with morality. The other thing, too, is murder is illegal, but people still murder, right? We have a system of punishment in place, but people still murder. I mean, murderers go to jail. Some some of them do. But, like, that's kind of the thing, isn't it? If you murder somebody, you will get caught and you will get put in prison for life. But that still doesn't dissuade people from murdering each other. So what's the crux of that problem? Why do people murder each other? That's what you should be looking at. And yeah, that's a lot harder of an answer to find. And But if you do that and you structure society in a way where somebody doesn't have to make that choice, then I think we're going to then I think we're objectively solving the problem here. So again, if we're go, if we're going to really solve this problem of racial profiling, uh, and a and a very very racist criminal justice system, which very much includes the police officers, then we're gonna have to look at the core problem, and that core problem again goes back to the system. It's the training. It's the it's it's the culture surrounding policing, right? Now, traffic stops are like the most common interaction between citizens and the cops, right? I, I mean that's that's the only time. I'm I'm fortunate enough as a brown man that I have not had any sort of violent interaction with the cops. I mean, but I've I've gotten close where I've been very nervous. You know, I got pulled over in Kentucky uh, and at two o'clock in the morning driving to a friend's place after a show. And I was very nervous. I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, and I have I travel with these jars. I like drinking out of jars. That's just a thing I like. Right. And I wasn't even thinking about it, you know, but he looked at the jar and he was like, what's in the jar? And I was like, it's water. And he was like, are you sure about that? And he kind of got a little and I was like, dude, do you want to taste it? Right. Which was like also not a thing. But I was just tired. And I was like, are you kidding? Like, what are you talking about? Why would I have an open container in my fucking car? I would have like moved it or something. And I wasn't swerving or anything. I just had my high beams on in a fog area because I didn't know that you're not actually supposed to do that, right? Fun fact, you're not supposed to do that. But I was terrified. I was very nervous about it. Fortunately, he gave me a warning and, and went away. But the second the, the moonshine argument came up, I was just like, I don't know where this is going to go. This could be it. Because cops and citizens interact via traffic violations, it's the highest potential for abuse. It's also a traffic violation, right? Like, that's not particularly exciting. When was the last time you saw a cop movie that circulated around police officers fucking given traffic citations and then, like, dealing with the paperwork of it? As I'm saying, I'm bored as I'm fucking saying it. It's not entertaining, you know? But... Because of the media portrayal of, of cops and what cops do and, and how cops are awesome and they solve these things and they're big fucking heroes. Fucking lethal weapon. That's what that's what is the mentality of cops. And when you have to on a daily basis, you know, fucking do traffic duty or make sure when there's a, a utility thing fixing the phone line outside my house that cops need to show up to maintain traffic and maintain civilians, not fucking gawking at these people trying to do their jobs. That's not exciting, but that's part of what you're doing as a cop. Right. And we'll address this, the, this problem a little later in the video as well. But here's the, here's the problem with this data manipulate. Uh, and, and let me kind of put a button on that point is that's not, you know, cops are supposed to feel excited. So that's why whenever they get an opportunity and someone has a traffic violation, they're like, fucking yeah, let's be the hero. I'm going to slide across the front of my cop car and come in guns a blazing and tell somebody to put their hands up and it'll be a shootout and I'll get shot in the shoulder and I look really cool. But then I'll say something really neat like, you know, fucking here's your ticket buddy and then i pulled the trigger and and then i bam i hit him and and then and then i'll get an award 
I'll get an award because I stopped the bad guy. You know, who's just this Hispanic guy going maybe five over the speed limit. But that's what they want. That's the culture that's being. And when they don't get that, they kind of invent that. Right. They give themselves a reason and, and they get to use the bullshit excuse of I felt like my life was in danger. Was it was your life actually in danger, though? And I want to say 95 percent of the instances where where police brutality has been looked into. They weren't in any real danger, in any real danger. They manufactured that because of that culture. Because of how we how cops are portrayed and what what their training tells them they can do. So, you know, let's look at the trouble that happens when you lie about it, because essentially what what they're doing by marking everybody as white and saying, hey, we're taking care of the racial profiling problem this way. It's literally the cops way of using data collection and saying, well, I don't see color. It's like, oh, don't you? Are you colorblind? How come you still hate black people then? Because, again, all it's doing is showing you that showing you how little they actually attack people of color in this country. That's all it's doing is erasing that. It's manipulating data to 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 manufacture proof for your point. Right? So, and and here's the thing, right? These cops, when they, when they get caught with this, they could be like, well, I filled it out to the best of my ability. I thought they were white. Well, but that's why I marked them down as white. Yeah, really? Someone with the last name Rodriguez or Sanchez or there's very Casco, Castillo, these are all very Anglo-Saxon white. You've never made fun of anybody for these kinds of names in your entire life. You've just thought that they were always kind of just Anglo fucking. What? And then even that to me is just like, cool. So you just manifest destiny, their fucking culture. You just manifest destiny, their ethnicity. And you're just fine with that. Like you should come out and be like, oh, we should fix the data. But you didn't. You were just like, my, my, my best judgment is I fucking thought this guy who was very clearly brown and didn't. His last name was Lopez. And I mean, George, I like George Lopez. But I mean, so, you know, George, he's very white passing. But, well, you know, maybe he's white passing. Do you think he's white passing? Which is such an insulting fucking thing to say to any person of color that you're fucking white passing. Because guess what, motherfucker? We're not white. If we were, we wouldn't have to deal with the... With with the, with the mountain of fucking issues that we do as a person of color. The level of insult that is. And, but these cops get to get away with it, right? And then and then they go, well, oh, well, he said sorry. It's like, that, and, but you've ruined someone's record. You've ruined someone's life because of your dumbass fucking mistake. And you still get to be a fucking cop. And that's part of the problem. But, and and you don't see these stories. Like I said, even, you know, ProPublica is the only only place where I saw this story. Even even a lot of super lefty news uh, outlets didn't really cover this a whole lot. And I'm not saying they're ignoring the problem, right? There, there's a bajillion problems in the world, and everybody kind of does their best in covering what what issues, soci sociopolitical issues uh, they feel passionately about, then they can put their energy into. But, you know, corporate media is not going to cover this. CNN ain't doing a story about this. Fox News isn't talking about this because it's not fun and sexy. They don't get to they don't get to try to capitalize uh, on the story specifically based on identity. They don't get to use somebody's identity to try to make cash off of it. So corporate media doesn't really give a shit. But here's here's a case that that, you know, is this kind of illustrates a lot of the problems that we're talking about here. And I will do that. Oh, cool. It worked. Awesome. Um, so I'll read through this part. This is from the ProPublica article, right? I just want to give you an example of the type of, uh, and this is a high profile case they mentioned in the article, but this is the, this is the type of shit that I'm talking about that happens pretty regularly. It says for years, many in Jefferson's parishes, Hispanic community have accused the sheriff's office of targeting them for stops with the intention of investigating their immigration status. Which, again, this is also a big problem, right, uh, is is like Border Patrol and Immigration Services and what have you. Well, first of all, there's like 18 different types of cops 
for immigrants, specifically Latin American immigrants, right? But specifically like Mexican immigrants that are coming over the border, so on and so forth. Um, so there's like 18,000 different types of immigration cops. All of them are a violation of, uh, of constitutional rights and human rights. They constantly violate both of those things. Uh, so we don't need the sheriff's office to be another fucking immigration police. We just don't. That's not your fucking jurisdiction. But again, that goes back to them wanting to be lethal weapon. They want to be Steven Seagal. They want to be under siege and the less popular under siege too. But and and so that's that's also part of the problem, and and it's it's an unrecognized problem, because they still allow cops to do this shit, even though it bothers border patrol, even though it bothers the you know the customs immigration whatever the fuck cop, even though it bothers ICE, they still let them do it because the point is to make the lives of immigrants and people of color much more difficult, so that they go back to where they came from fucking idiots all right sorry i know i'm getting a little heated heated in this little debate here but anyway it says in one high profile case from 2017 atner costco i apologize if i butchered that name at atner costco a honduran native claimed he was beaten and robbed of more than two thousand dollars by deputies working on a task force dedicated to identifying and deporting undocumented people so again this happens quite often um, it's called civil forfeiture. Cops can legally steal your shit if they feel like it's going to help the, the the case, which is also just like what? Why is that fucking legal? Civil forfeiture is just fine. You're just fine with it. Cops are allowed to steal stuff. Isn't that what they're supposed to prevent? Is average citizens getting robbed? Casco filed a lawsuit against a sheriff's office, which settled last year for fifty thousand dollars, and one detective was fired. There's there's Casco right there. Um, okay, this is the paragraph I want to read. Uh, Casco's attorneys, Casey Denson and Kenneth Bordes, said the stop and detention of their client who is now eligible for a U visa, which grants permanent residency to crime victims, was a clear case of racial profiling conducted on behalf of immig immigration services. They pointed to a statement provided by the supervising detective on the scene that day who said, based on his eight years of experience working in narcotic, quote, Hispanic males are usually involved in some kind of illegal activity. Okay. Let's fucking break that down. Let's fucking break that down, right? Hispanic males are usually involved in some type of illegal activity. And that is an official police statement from the lead detective of a task force in the sheriff's department that is targeting undocumented immigrants, which basically means anybody that's brown and looks vaguely Hispanic, which is also a very racial fucking thing. Uh, first of all, this type of policing is not based on real investigations or evidence. So if you are, and I'm not even talking about morality here, I'm talking about a, a decent objective criminal justice system that is based on real investigations and evidence. None of that works. None of that works. And if a detective is going to use that kind of reasoning to arrest somebody, that detective should no longer be on the police force and that task force should be dissolved. I mean, you know, Costco won. Obviously he won. It's a clear cut case of racial profiling. The task force being put together is for racial profiling purposes. That's what they put the task force together for. But it goes back to what I said earlier, right? These cops can just play dumb. I don't know that you want to do why. I made the best judgment that I could. Oh, man. What he was... He was Hispanic this whole time. Well, I don't see color. It's just basically a version of that. 
but worse because you're literally saying, well, I did know he was Hispanic and they're all criminals. How is that? Di- you want to know what the problem with Trump was? The problem with Trump was he he exposed these things that people of color have been fucking telling you for years. When he makes statements like they're all criminals and rapists, it's like this has been the problem like forever. That's why racism exists, because this is the culture. Trump didn't create this. Trump is just a fucking product of it. What pissed you off is that you didn't want to hear it. And now you're forced to fucking hear it. And now you're fucking forced to contend with it. That's why white people get fucking annoyed with that shit. But guess what, man? This is the type of shit that we have to deal with as people of color. And it, and it permeates. It permeates through generations. Kids used to beat the shit out of me because I was brown. Where do you think that comes from? That comes from a culture that believes that, you know, Hispanic males are usually involved in some type of illegal activity. That is an official police statement. Police make that statement. And then that carries into the media. It carries into the politics because the politics is allowing behavior like this. And then it keeps permeating down, right? Because then average people, including liberals, including liberals will fucking say this type of shit. The liberals will use nice, flowery, academic language. But they'll fucking say shit like this. And then it gets into the brains of kids. And then those kids look at someone like me or look at another Latino kid, and they beat the shit out of them because they think it's okay. Because Hispanic males are usually involved in some type of illegal activity. That's what they believe. See how it fucking permeates down? See how all of these big political ideologies that you think are too far actually affect your everyday fucking life? Here's the thing. Why is manipulating traffic data such a big deal, right? Because most of the police departments that have been involved in racial profiling cases do what Louisiana's Jefferson Parish is doing. They're they they are all involved in data manipulation and racial profiling. Or rather data, data manipulation to continue racial profiling. Here's here's a statement that they say. They say based on the observation of the law enforcement officer. That's what that's how they justify that. Right? Because by I I was white passing. That's basically that statement. That's basically them saying, well, it's what the officer feels. He just felt that he was a white man. Fuck your feelings, copper. Nobody gives a shit about your feelings. What does the empirical data say? You don't work in fucking feelings. You work in evidence and facts. Sure, yes, there's gut feelings and all that sort of stuff, but gut feelings don't hold up in court except when you make stupid fucking statements like Hispanic males are usually involved in some type of illegal activity and based on the observation of the law enforcement officer. None of those things should hold up in court, and if they do hold up in court, then burn the whole criminal justice system down because it's fucking fucking racist and it's skewed and it's not an actual justice system it's the criminal racist system that's what it is you're not advocating for justice if you're going to use statements like this as empirical evidence that's why those things are linked Now, most of the data that's collected is supposed to get sent to the Department of Public Safety and uh, and Corrections, Uh, and 99% of it is not. The the article points out, like, there's a couple thousand of these police departments that are supposed to do this, and only two of them actually follow that rule. Which is fucking embarrassing. All of this stuff is easily debunkable. Right. So cops are skewing the data. Well, we can fix it. We can fix that data by using the census. This is why censuses are important. Right. And I know fucking conservatives are like, it's my house. Fucking privacy. It's my right. What happens under my roof? It's like, okay, man, but census data actually has a point and a purpose and it's not invasive. 
I mean, sure, America uses it for nefarious deeds because America, much like a lot of other capitalist nations, kind of takes bureaucracy and fucks it. Uh, they're basically like, how can we use the government and do the worst job possible for the sake of profit? Because that's what, how the government operates. But the census data actually has like a reason why it exists. But much like the criminal justice system, it's not being used the way that it's supposed to. But in this case, it, we can actually use census data the way that it's supposed to. Easily counter this. Easily counter this. Right? And after doing these sorts of investigation, after kind of uh, cross-referencing the people that have been pulled over, the Sanchez's, the Rodriguez's, the Lopez's, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, we basically discover that seven is specifically in Texas, 75 percent uh, of the data was manipulated and misidentified. That's a big percentage in just one state. So, you know, how big is that number really? Once we once all of the investigations are done, I wouldn't be surprised if that if on on an and on a uh, nationwide scale we're looking at 90 95% of data manipulation and misidentification again the democrats do this in a different way too don't forget this is what we were mad at andrew cuomo for doing he manipulated the covid numbers uh to to essentially like not give people the aid that they need in their state they it decreased the amount of money that they got for aid in his state gretchen whitmer in detroit did the same thing the democrats do it do do this data manipulation bullshit that if, that you know ends up killing more people just as much as the republicans do and just as much as these fucking cops do this is a systemic problem So we've talked about the cops being the problem here, right? So what? How does this affect the victims? How does this? How how do how do the how does the, the Hispanic and Latin American country across across America feel about things like this? Well, it creates a culture of fear. Like I said, I mean, I'm not comfortable getting pulled over anymore. I'm, you know, the second I see those lights behind me in any sort of instance, I'm like, fuck, is this it? Is this the moment? I don't know. I, I legitimately don't know. It's terrifying. And it creates this culture of fear. So now minority communities are, are you know, constantly looking for cops instead of paying attention to the road. And that creates a more dangerous driving condition on the roads because they're not being attentive to the to what's happening in front of them which means that they might accidentally run a stop sign. They might speed a little bit more. They might have not seen that change in the, in the in the speed. They might have made an illegal left turn. And then they get pulled over again and then the cycle repeats itself. So everything about what these police departments and sheriff's offices are doing to take care of racial profiling within their ranks is just exacerbating the problem. These aren't even stopgap solutions, by the way. So what are the solutions to this problem? Well, the solutions to this problem are, are no different than what we've talked about before on this channel several times, right? And, and I know some of you guys that are probably listening or watching have heard me talk about these solutions before, and you're like, oh my God, Chris, we get, but there's still people that don't get it because... If they got it, then we would have implemented these solutions already. We've been talking about these solutions since fucking 2020 at the earliest, right? But like realistically, we've been talking about reforming the entire criminal justice system from the ground up, which inform which which involves completely restructuring the police uh, system in and of itself far earlier than 2020. George Floyd was just a breaking point to to make this issue a mainstream issue an unignorable issue that cnn has to cover these protests but what's the solution right it's total systemic change it's stuff to defund the police movement's been talking about right uh it's it's um it is defunding the police but defunding them and taking what their budget was and compartmentalizing it right 
it means that beat uh, you do have people that walk the beat that learn about the community that they are here to serve. It also means that you have to live in the community that you're serving or at least adjacent to it. I mean, there, there, there's like neighborhoods near me that are probably facing similar issues that we are. But it's like, if I go a block down the street from me, I'm in a different township. If I go a mile the other di direction, I'm in a different borough. But they still face similar problems to us. So if you live in the adjacent community, that's okay. But you got to know who you're serving. So that's got to come back into policing. All right? Compartmentalizing these jobs. Do, does a beat cop patrolling the neighborhood, learning about who lives here and all that sort of jazz. Do they need to have a gun? Likely not. That also shouldn't be the most readily available thing, especially because B cops are more about de-escalation. I mean, what are these cops going to get called for? Probably some domestic violence issues. Probably some neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor complaints. So what do they need training in? They need de-escalation training, right? They need mediation training. Do you guys remember peer mediators from high school? That needs to be a, 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 a major focus of that kind of policing. It's the same thing. Police officers that have guns and bulletproof vests and fucking Ray-Ban sunglasses to look badass. Because they're going to be the next Mel Gibson. I'm going to rock a ponytail because I'm the next fucking Steven Seagal. If that's your mentality, then you don't get to be a beat cop. You don't get to be a traffic cop. You, you get to be put on an island so we don't have to fucking deal with your personality and the fact that you won't deal with your mental health issues because daddy never gave you a hug. Moving on. Traffic, if you're if you're going to try, somebody that gives out traffic tickets should not be the, a detective, right? A detective does police investigations. Solving murders, robberies, that sort of stuff, some high scale things, then become a detective. But if you're just if you're a beat cop or, or, or a traffic cop that hands out traffic tickets, then that's what you do. That is your that is your job. It not, might not be glitz and glamorous, but it keeps people safe. It makes sure that people are following the rules and it makes sure that people can trust the people protecting their communities. Because right now, fucking no way. Fucking no way do I trust the cops. You know, the, I've, I've said this before. I'm, I'm lucky to live in Millvale because Millvale has community police officers, right? So, like, I know some of the cops around here, I, and I don't – I see them maybe once or twice a week patrolling around. So that's cool. But in, like, Germany and in, in, in Europe and stuff, I think – and I'm not saying that their police departments aren't without fault because they are. But, you know, they don't see cops patrolling the area as much. Compartmentalization is important. These these and, and here we go. This is if you're a conservative, that's job creation, right? Increased training, de-escalation needs to be the key. So what does that mean? That means adding a social worker or a counselor or a therapist or someone that knows how to uh, identify people's ethnicities and cultures appropriately so that someone giving a traffic ticket is doing that job properly. That's another important thing, right? Somebody that understands uh, how cultural sensitivities work. Somebody that understands how mental health sensitivities work. Accountability needs to be a part of this restructuring of the system. That means a citizen oversight committee. And that, including that, I think is a huge thing. I think every city should have a citizen oversight committee um, that looks at police violations, police, police crimes, and all that sort of stuff, right? That needs to be a problem. Now, what this does is that it means that you're now going to have to be an active member of your community. It means that you're going to have to get to know your neighbors, and it means that we're going to have to have a par paradigm shift uh, from hyper-individualism to a little bit more of a collective community-based thinking. Just adding the Citizen Oversight Committee alone will trigger all of those things and start changing society in the right way. So, But you know, the first step is actually taking that step. And and conservatives will come out and be like, bur, 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 bur. no, 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 this is bureaucracy done the right way. This is how government's supposed to operate. It is a paradigm shift so that a populace starts giving a shit about its community and their neighbors. That is the important part of this thing. That is why we do this.
And if cops are supposed to legitimately be about protecting and serving, this is how you show that you actually protect and serve the people. Until then, all you guys are are racist mercenaries for the rich. That's all you are. That's all cops will be. And that's why we need this kind of reform. That's why data collection is so important. And that's why this sort of shit shouldn't go unpunished. We need to see more people, more more, more people, from, especially from the Latin American community, especially from, from the black community, the indigenous community, the black and brown community, right? The people of color that constantly get harassed by the cops, neighborhoods that get over patrolled. Again, what's the solution to crime, man? The solution to crime is working away from capitalism, having some human-centric policies in place, taking uh, into consideration mental health, psychology, that sort of stuff. The root cause of crime is poverty, scarcity, all that kind of stuff. That's the root cause of crime. It's not because we put Hispanic on the fucking traffic ticket. Data collection is important. It identifies the problems within policing. But if, you're, if, you're, I, if your goal is to get rid of crime, well, this isn't the way you do it. If you want to get rid of racial profiling, you don't manipulate data to do it. That's called lying. If you want real, true systemic change, it comes from what I just described. Okay, that wraps up this video. I know it got a little intense there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, if you did, you know, hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, especially if you guys are over on YouTube or Facebook, make sure you're heading over to Rockfin and Odyssey or subscribing to my website, because that's the way that you guys will be able to, you know, not miss out on any of the content that I put out, especially when I start doing, uh, more reviews with the sociopolitical lens of pop culture and, and all that sort of stuff. You know, I'm going to have to use clips and that's a copyright issue. So get, get, go, go on over to Rockfin dot com slash Krish Mohan Haha or look me up on Odyssey at Krish Mohan Haha or my website at Krish Mohan Haha dot com or you can just join my email list if you don't want to subscribe to multiple things uh, and that way you get access directly to all of these things I send out an email once a week with the list of all the videos and podcasts that I put out that week it's Krish Mohan Haha dot Substack dot com super easy to find and uh, doesn't really take all that that much time now these are free but you can uh, become a paid subscriber uh, make monthly contributions directly off of that email list so you can do multiple things on that email list uh, and another way to uh, become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation is uh, via my website at Krish Mohan Haha dot com slash donate uh, you get bonus content, you get exclusive stuff, fun, you, you know, just uh, just a bunch of fun, cool things. I try not to put a lot of stuff behind a paywall, but, uh, you know, you do get cool stuff if you do. A uh, couple shows coming up. February 3rd, I'm doing a virtual stand-up comedy show over Zoom. It's going to be mostly new material that I'm very excited to share with you guys. And on February 17th, I'm going to be at the Bryant Street Barbershop uh, performing live comedy with Garrett Teitelbaum and Osha Dwyer, which I'm very excited to see because those are two phenomenal, very funny comedians. Uh, so be sure to check that show out. Uh, we'll see you again soon. Um, and uh, I've got more of these, more a couple more of these videos coming up. So stay tuned, folks. Stay tuned. Uh, but till then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the road, guys.